And I would go over there and say, well, it's not over here, it's over here. And say, how would you know that? Well, I would hold the pencil on the edge of this box here and see if it overlapped this one. So that, it's that simple. Now these lines here are not hard and fast lines that are placed in any particular place. I simply drew them in here to show you that if you drew a line along this one and a line along this one, there's this big of a space. And this big of a space could be compared to this space. Visually, for you to see if this box is just a little wider than this space. This line up here, I simply drew it up there to see if this box had a receding plane or a trapezoid that was higher than this one. That's all I did. I could have drew, drew a line here if I thought I could compare this one to the front of this one. I drew a line on the bottom here and noticed that the bottom of this box is lower than this one in the picture plane. So that's really all you're doing. You're using this to measure. Now we're going to take this and apply it to the exercises here. Now there's two exercises. You have this one and then on the next page you'll have one that looks like this. Now this one's of course sideways. Turn it like this. In a studio situation or most of the time when you look at things it will look similar to this. Now what that means is it is you have no horizontal lines. Do you see any horizontal lines? That's the pencil represents a horizontal line or represents the bottom of your page and anything in here that would also be horizontal. Well, I don't see anything that lines up with the horizontal line. This is more common in, a, in most observation, okay? It's also the most dramatic. It's a diagonal line. Also, you'll see a lot of parallelograms in here. We'll talk about that later. Now, this one is, has all horizontal lines as a major component. Um, this is more difficult to find uh, just by happening by any kind of object because you have to be standing directly in front of it. This is, this is called one-point perspective when you have horizontal lines for the main part of your objects. This is a very, usually when you're taught that about perspective, which you will in about two or three lessons, um, that, that's the first thing you're taught because it's the easiest because it has very few variables. And it just teaches you the fundamentals of how it works. What we're doing in this exercise is learning how to draw the same way we drew those stools in lesson four, which is we don't care about perspective yet at all. We're just going to use techniques we already learned to draw something like this, but the first thing you want to look at is whether these, you have horizontal lines or not. Okay, so basically what this is telling you to do is we want to do the contour of this group of objects. And what I tell you to do in the directions is to draw, trace the contour. Just go ahead and trace it, okay? So I'm going to trace it. Now, you know, it's the way, what you really want to do here in the next part, and I'm just telling you this ahead of time to save a little time here, is don't trace the whole thing because the, all you are getting graded on is whether you do this. And whether you do it perfectly is not going to be graded any better than if you don't do it perfectly. Because what you're trying, what I want you to do is to learn how to apply this method of drawing something complicated to learn to draw it more accurately by what you're, by seeing, actually seeing what you're looking at. So, you know, if you want to go and try and, and make it look perfect, it's, it doesn't matter. And, you know, it's very easy to tell anyway if you, what you did with it because mine won't be perfect. And I'm gonna do it right in front of you and you'll see where it isn't perfect. Okay, so this, what I just did, is a contour drawing. That's what this is, a contour drawing 
of a group of objects. Now, what do you notice about this? Well, it's got something sticking up. Um, is it, what kind of shape would you say this is? That's the first thing I ask. Is it basically a square or a rectangle? I would say this is pretty close to a, 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 a kind of a square shape overall. You're looking at the impression of what it is. So if you were to draw a contour of this, you may not think that at first. You may think, well, these are sticking out. This thing must be long. So you draw it very different. So you say, well, how am I going to measure this? So what, what this exercise is, is it's, we're doing it in the book because it's easier to show you in the book how to do that and for you to practice the idea or the concept. You may get, depending on how the class is structured, some real objects out there in the studio, or you may be building some of your own, if it's an online class, and you will be trying the same technique with real objects. Okay, but what we're gonna do in here is just take the same techniques and applying, apply them to the pictures here, because you have about everything you can imagine is in both of these. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to map this out. And that's going to be very similar to what we talked about here. In the last lecture, I talked about mapping this in the ratio and proportion of it. Remember, I said this was two and a half long to one height. Take one height was probably two and a half lengths. So this is close to a square. It's a little taller, but predominantly what we're looking at here is, is a square. So the first thing, your book may have a border and it may not. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a border on here that's very similar, and it'll be very close to the one that's over here, which is actually the edge of the picture. And again, borders, you can use a ruler, but it does not have to be. Uh, perfect. It just has to be, you know, since this is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, I know this is about a half inch border. This one's about five eighths. And, and so I'm going to be pretty close um, over here. And so I'm not too worried about it. But what I want is I want a clear picture plane because I need to divide this space up. I want to divide it in half. Now I'm guessing, okay, but I'm hoping I'm guessing pretty close. You can use a ruler to do this. But we're, gonna, we're just gonna guess. Okay, so if I could trace this one also, but I'm not going to, what I want is I want these halfway marks in here. And I'm gonna guess this one's about right here. Now, if you were using a um, viewfinder, which you made a couple lessons ago, your viewfinder has these marks on it. And it's about the same proportion as this shape. This is basically a vertical portrait shape here. All right? So now I'm going to map this out, just like I did in the last lesson. It looks like this little thing is right here on the edge of that. And it's about this far off. Now, if I had a viewfinder, I would be holding my viewfinder up and looking at this shape, and I'd see that mark, and I'd have my viewfinder vertically, holding it arm's length in front of me as best I could, or I might have to move it in and out a little bit to position this grouping in my viewfinder so that it's this close to the edges of the window of my viewfinder. So now I'm looking at that, and I'm going, okay, that one's about there. This corner is right on there. Down here, I don't have much of anything. I've got a straight line about that far up. So I'm just going to draw a straight line up there, around in there. I don't know how long it's supposed to be. And boy, this is convenient. Looks like this corner is right on this one. And it's about that far away. Now I've got a little bit of a map. Now I could do a contour. I could do the contour, as you remember from last time, you have to start at some point or some, so I call it, I usually say start at an inside corner, which is what this is, or an outside corner, which is what this or this is. 
Now, what I'm trying to do now is just draw the contour. So I, what I would suggest is you draw it lightly at first. And you see how I'm not drawing very dark anymore. And so I'm just going to go. And I, what I'm doing while I'm doing this is I'm looking over here. Now, first thing I noticed is that this is too short compared to this one, but that's okay. That's why I drew a light, okay? Nobody's perfect. So, now, I'm, I'm trying to fix that, but as soon as I do that, if some of you sharp people out there, you're probably going, well, I already see that this thing is parallel with this one, but he didn't do that here. That's why, you know, it, this is almost like a warming up exercise sometimes as well because this, these things are not that easy to do. But, but that's why contour drawing is so important because what, what you're really doing is you're saving yourself a lot of time. And trying to draw this complicated of a shape um, just by drawing them one at a time will never work. You'll never get it all in the picture plane, um, never. And, and you'll end up erasing things and it'll make, be very frustrating. Okay, so now let's see how good I did. All you have to do is take this and move it over here. Oh boy, look at that. Now, what's the matter here? Well, it's backwards for one thing, so that won't work. Um, what I'm seeing was, that, and one of the things about using this is that I can compare this way, you see, and all of these lines, of course, I already know all of these lines going left and right are all going to be horizontal lines. None of them will be on an angle. So I already know that. So all of these lines here are all horizontal. This line was too high. So that's probably going to be there. And then that means that this one is going to be lower. It's probably about down here. Okay, so basically the, the idea here is, is if you do this good, this is great. You probably could do better than me. It's okay. This is great. Now, the next thing is how do I get all of these in here? Well, the first thing you're going to do now is use something like this. So the first thing I, I know that this is the, uh, this stand ha starts here at this bump, which is right here, and has to go straight across. Because that's a horizontal line. Then I see that this one is below that, about that far. So I know there's something down here. Now the next thing I can start with my pencil and look over here and go, well if I line up this top piece here and I go down to here, it looks like it lines up with this box here. So that's how you would use that. So now I know that this is in the right spot. Then I can use my measuring. Remember when we talked about I take this width and this height and that's a square. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's going to be pretty close. So this shape is this shape. Now I'm beginning to start to build this. I know that this, I'm looking now for something else that is um, close here. It looks like I could take this. This piece here, I'm going to, and, and again, sometimes what you can do is you just start to, if you put one in and guess, I've got one in, I know where it goes. This is probably up here. Now, with this, with this in, the first thing I'm going to look at is this corner right here. And then I'll go over here and I'll say, well, 
if I, if I take this pencil and, line, and go down this known line, I see that this corner is to the left of that. And so if I put my pencil here, I can see my corner is to the left of that. Then I'm gonna look here and say, well, is this corner, how much lower is it than this line? Well, it's a lot lower than what I've got because if I take this pencil and put it here, look at the space I have here. And if I put it over here, look at the space, it's too small. So that means this is lower here, this is lower, and so this, this box is now here. So now I would be taking out my, uh, and now I have my pink pearl, which is the rubber eraser, because this works better on this. You wouldn't want to use this. This one is a little too big. Remember this one, the gum eraser? Uh, there's your um, kneaded eraser. That's okay here, but I like this one for this kind of work. Okay, so the idea here is to continue building this in this way, okay? Then you would go over here, and what you can do is you can trace these like this. And then what you would do is put a piece of paper under it, and you can compare this to what you did over here because you're just comparing the two visually right next to each other, okay? Now, when you work on something out in the, if you work on something out in the studio, you'll be applying this in exactly the same way. Now, in the studio, what you will find, again, as I said before, is that this type of arrangement will only exist for maybe one person in a group, in a group situation, only one person. Maybe two, it'll be the person on the opposite side most of the time you'll be getting an object that looks like this or some variation of this which has no horizontal lines. Now, in this case, the same thing applies, but what you have to do, what you, you will realize in, in something like this is that all of these angles are parallel. You see that? This one, this one, this one, this one. This one, you see I'm, I'm going all along these, these edges here. All of these edges.